Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a, another model review. Today we're going to be looking at the 4D Chinese manufacturer 1 to 144 scale tank line. I resell models through the Salt Mine Hobby Shop in Australia, event and online, and found this is a new line that no one else has really reviewed, covered, or showed off before. Uh, being a big fan of the Type 97, had to build it in a scale I have not seen it before. The whole line consists of eight mostly World War II era tanks in the entire set that you can sell as a blind gash upon a whole set or various kits. Pre-coloured reclaimed ABS. All the pieces already exist on a single runner. I'm not too sure if the tooling is originally from them or if they have been recast from uh, molds elsewhere. Now I'm really loving the change to the box art. Very slick, very professional. By an initial look at the uh, runners and the box art, it's a big improvement from the 72nd uh, very basic originally tooled tank I reviewed a few years back. I have a little issues with the box art as it's depicting something that looks like it's computer generated or for a game like World of Tanks or War Thunder. I am familiar in uh, Beijing and around China there are examples of Japanese captured uh, tanks as well as other allied and Axis bought tanks to use during the uh, Chinese Revolution. The Japanese example does not include this type of Type 97 so I'm not sure if it's a what if fantasy tank though as the brand carries itself as a educational platform teaching aid it's a tad dishonest. I would imagine such a small scale it would be very complex to color the Imperial Japanese camouflage scheme in factory as these are pre-painted or there's a political issue of displaying that marking scheme being manufactured in mainland China. The box contains the instructions in four panels printed on the rear in black and white fairly clear enough to understand. Opening it at the side, all the runners and everything comes out of a soft plastic tray. I've also noticed the box art contains a cutout of the tank in a glossy clear plastic. The rest of the box is matted, which is normally a style I like over a semi-glossy box. Gives it a wax texture like a Kodo box. So this is everything displayed out of the box, very nicely presented, reason why I've taken so many photos. It is uh, pre-painted and masked in the factory. Everything has been injected using reclaimed ABS, already pre-coloured black. It is uh, a bit of an issue, which we're going to cover. The inner side is unpainted and you can see that there are uh, pegs and joints for snapping together. I've uh, cut the instructions out. Going back to the old 72nd version I did a while ago, they generally use the same chassis like the motorized or wind up Japanese tanks uh, way back from Fujimi and uh, whatnot. They sold for a couple of hundred yen. Uh, this time each tank has its own dedicated tooling and each uh, chassis or hull is individualized to that particular unit. With my familiarity of uh, building enough tanks, I feel the scale, size, detail, proportions of each tank is fairly realistic enough accounting for the material and the size. The gun barrels are lacking and tad to chunky. The aerial on the top of the Type 97 tank is definitely far too thick though I'm not going to complain too much and would write it off as ideal for a basic uh, diorama piece for science fiction like Gundam or uh, to create a cheap ball gaming app. The antenna being ABS was surprisingly strong and through mucking around with it didn't break until later on. Managed to snap it back into place but with no luck. The rest of it however 
the join of the uh, peg and plug did not fit sufficiently as if the size of the hole and the size of the peg was exactly the same without the allowance of it uh, fitting in widening of the hole is uh, definitely recommended though i just happily cut the peg off and plastic cemented everything together with tamir white cement that wasn't much of an issue any sort of imperfections like sink marks counter marks injection pins were not too much of an issue all uh, flash marks were appropriately uh, placed rivets a bit too chunky a very large scale item though detail is defined enough that uh, hand painting it would still look good the tank tracks normally the bane of most armor builds were all in one piece not weak enough to break the slides into place once uh, the holes were widened or the pegs cut off absolutely uh, beautiful to look at worth stealing to add to other uh, interesting scratch build or fun projects the whole build with my modifying notes into account took less than an hour fairly pleased without mucking around attempting a single night build primed the whole thing with tamir gray primer and pulled out the mr hobby early war imperial japanese paint set utilizing masking putty or what the americans call panzer putty airbrushed utilizing lacquer thinner each coat removing the putty and repurposing it to get that japanese color scheme going followed by with a fine paintbrush dabbing on the yellow line with mr hobby lacquer yellow as the coats were dusted on and the yellow done by stippling in two processes the rest of the colors appropriate such as burnt iron for the tracks gun metal for the guns and bits and pieces uh, wood for the railing of the uh, aerial and the exhaust and aerial being uh, copper comparing to the notes of the jashikuni shrine tank i've seen before and uh, taken photos with hand painted all the small bits and pieces detail hitting it with a few 70 second very tiny decals onto the hull bit of future floor a sludge wash and matted it during the next session on the following day a little bit of a weathering process of a touch of earth colored uh, washes applied on the flat surfaces to give it a little bit more life what slowed everything down was the enamel oil washes and the enamel in the uh, pigment uh, wash that I made up for the earthy colours. Didn't want to put down a lacquer clear on top of that. So that was about two days of uh, drying in between each of the two weathering states and uh, the final coat. So that would have only been about a 10-15 minute job. Nonetheless, the whole thing was done in a total of three to four hours. The really deep, over-exaggerated Wargaming detail will take very well to the Wargaming uh, Warhammer approach of your polyurethanes, putting a base coat, dry brushing, washing it, or uh, hand painting it in enamels, giving it a wash. Uh, the washes I applied to this really made the uh, detail pop to the reason why I wanted to use multiple colours the tiny tiny decals if you can get your hands on them really do uh, add a touch remember flame of wars has uh, done an american allied uh, german russian set which i do have for uh, tiny markets and tiny takes which is absolutely uh, perfect for something like this other uh, makes uh, out there do very very similar also decided in this picture to compare this tank with the airfix 76 close enough to a 70 second subject a 1 to 144 scale Gundam kit even though it's a vintage Gelgoog uh, these various tanks could be used as a background uh, fodder or ruins diorama or a wreck that sort of thing for various mecha subjects even if you're going off the wall and just want that extra battlefield uh, detail looking look they are very very cheap especially if you mash them up to look unrecognizable or detail them further to look like an unrecognizable 
futuristic tank as well as a jar of uh, Tamir paint just to give you an idea if you're not familiar with any of the uh, other subjects. Uh, the joke is uh, small scale tanks are very fiddly to work with and uh, Imperial Japanese tanks are the tiniest with the uh, weirdest colour schemes. Uh, being at no cost I really want to pro approach other tanks and uh, go wild paint them. I've definitely got the uh, confidence now. Spending absolutely no time on this, very very happy uh, how it came out, so I'll be definitely jumping on some of my more obscure and uh, hard to uh, colour 70 second subjects which uh, will be coming out this year and next year. 1144 tanks I'm not going to touch again unless it's going to be a part of a diorama, I just want to collect everything. Uh, type 97 as well as uh, demonstrate this uh, new product which I'll be uh, forwarding on to my Australian customers and uh, that's about wraps it up thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content very highly recommended uh, product detail wise though it's not as simple and straightforward as a snap together uh, pre-colored kit uh, the pre uh, scheme is uh, very very poor but uh, not bad if you want a quick walk usual right up in the description section below with links to social media and whatnot and i'll catch you guys next time with another weekly video